up to our spoilers review of Victoria Aveyard's The King's Cage. We've really made no secret of how we felt about Glass Sword, where we just went through it and we're like, Dear God, why are we reading this? This has been the worst thing we've read in a very long time. I don't like Mare. She's not as whiny in this book as she was in the last book. In the last book I couldn't tolerate her because the entire thing, it's like, oh, you know, like, I'm... It's so hard it's to so, see me. Yeah. And like, I'm so alone and I just... No, you're not, honey. You're not alone. And everybody's <laughs> like, you're not alone. We're here to help you. And she's like, I'm so alone. Nobody understands me. In this book, it picks up right where the last book left off. She is a prisoner of Maven, and I'm like, okay, this is gonna be awful, and he's gonna torture her, and it's gonna be crazy, and like, it's gonna break her. That's... <sighs> that did not happen. That premise really confused me. Like, okay, he's got her all like, gussied up in silencing stones so she can't use her powers and like there are effects other than that, like it makes you sick and like it will probably eventually kill you. But he leaves her in the lap of luxury. Yeah, she's got like food she's and room. Food and books and and I'm just like, no! <laughs> she does her fair share of whining. The thing that kind of gets me is like, she okay, so she's physically weak and all that, but like her mind's still there, you know, she can still kind of do stuff if she was very sneaky about it. She tries once and then she's like, oh look, I tried. And then you go the rest of the, like the rest of the three quarters of the book where she's in his care and you're like, why are you doing anything? Like and, and and not only is she like kept in the lap of luxury, he lets her sit in on meetings and court, <laughs> and she's like one of the bridesmaids at his wedding. That is not how you treat your prisoner. <laughs> like if you're gonna keep her like a political royal prisoner in like royal people jail, you don't bring her into like your conference <laughs> meetings. And he's just like it's because I'm so obsessed with you. I I, I need you around. I need to keep you near me. And I'm just like. Oh God, no. And they have like several conversations about this where he's like, I am obsessed with you. My mother has fucked me up, but I am obsessed and I, I can't let you go and never leave me. And she's just like, are we trying to make Maven sympathetic? Because this is not romantic. <laughs> I'm reading this and I'm like, is she supposed to be like starting to feel bad for him because she, this is not okay, this is making me really uncomfortable. And I mean, yes, there's another aspect to Maven's character that we're introduced to that I quite like. It's the fact that Maven was very much screwed up by his mother. Alara, you know, she could go into people's minds and like see stuff and she could actually apparently change stuff as well. She went into his mind like pretty much his whole entire life and like Fixed, fiddled around and fixed stuff when he was afraid of the dark. She changed stuff so that he wasn't. She also did more damaging things like his father and brother. She wanted to, him to take over the kingdom so she took away his, his feelings for them. But apparently his feelings for Mare were so strong that she couldn't take away those feelings. So she just turned it into an obsession instead. I'm gonna quote the amazing and wonderful show, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Cool motive! Still murder. <laughs> Maven is interesting, <laughs> complex villain, and I'll give her that. But we shouldn't be thinking about how we can fix him. It's just like, let's kill him. Let's just end it. I mean, things that were done to him are awful. And I like it's out of his control. Like your mind is your mind and it's hard to get out of it. I get that. Like it's horrible and awful and I feel for him. On the other hand though, I'm sitting here kind of like watching his reign as king and I'm like, not that bad. No, it, it's, a, it's, it's a serious Claudius situation. Yeah, <laughs> right? You're like, he got the throne by shitty, ill-gotten gains. But on the whole, he's not a bad king. He's like, he's making changes and everyone's just like, but it's him making the changes. We can't stand for this. And it's just like, and so the fact that there are silver rebels is like, telling because it's just like, no, he's changing our way of life. Yeah, and you're like, well, your old way of life was shitty to these people, so, you know, you're gonna have to change. And so you're kind of, like, on, you're on his side, more or less, because every change he's made, you're like, meh, that's a good idea. But it's just like, every time he does something, like, he goes on this grand tour and he brings Mare along. And every time he does something, like, he gives speeches and, like, the Reds are cheering for him and then she's just like, how could they cheer for him? Like, he's a monster. He's a monster. And I'm just like, but... But he's the one actually being like, hey, okay, well, I'm going to fix things. And, like, granted, he's fixed a lot of surface things and things that are very easy to just be like, okay, that's done. But, I mean, 
given time, he might actually go in and change their way of life and bring up their standard of living. And, and I, I mean, a population that has been tread upon and just, like, shit upon by the royals. The moment you do something nice to, for them, they're gonna be like, hey! They're gonna, like, they're gonna this guy, flock to that. This it's, guy! <laughs> the first, one of the first things he does on this tour, this coronation tour, is he changes the law because the king, to punish the reds, lowered the, um... Age of, age of conscription. Conscription. So he returns it to what it was. And so people are like, yeah, you know, that's great. And Mary's just like, he's still gonna take your children away in, like, three years. And I'm just like, yes, he is. Yes. But right now, what are the people with 12-year-olds thinking? Yeah. My kid is safe for another three years. And, like, five minutes later, he turns around and is like, oh yeah, we're not fighting with the Lakelanders Yeah, anymore. I'm gonna, like, call a truce. So, no conscription whatsoever. And, okay, so, like, yes, we're both aware that Maven is an awful person. And, yes, we know that these are surface things that are totally gonna not be true because he's an awful person. So how, like, how can you separate your personal character from rule? You know, like, yeah, this but. is a Fisher King situation. Society is going to fall apart eventually because he's not the one <laughs> rightful king. Just, she's still the problem. Like, she's still just sitting there like, <gasps> my, my dark prince. Like, oh yeah, that freaked me yeah. out. She refers to him as her dark prince and I'm just like, this is not no. some gothic fucking romance. Is there a lot to say about the first part of the, like, the first three quarters of the book, not really. Big thing is he goes in, he fixes a little bit of stuff for the Reds, and he makes a truce with the Lakelanders, which means that he no longer is going to marry Evangeline. He is going to marry a Lakelander princess, which he does. And Evangeline, interesting, the most interesting character in the entire book is just like, I was made to be queen. Like I was actually legitly made to be queen. I was born like a few months after Cal because they wanted me to like, they wanted to like, put a kid on the throne. <laughs> and she's like, I've been trained my entire life. Did I want to be Maven's queen? Fuck no. And she's like, on the one hand, I was made to be queen. But on the other hand, I really didn't want to marry any of these people, so I'm kind of happy about this. There was this one moment that I really liked where she's just like, okay, I'd marry Cal. He'd probably have his mistress. I'd have my mistress. We'd be friends. We'd be fine. But then Mare shows up and screws it all up. So then her family is like one of the people le mainly leading the Silvers, so set up their own court and their own space, and they're like, we're kings now, and you're like, Good for you. So she's like, oh, okay. I'm a so I'm a princess. Again. I'm yeah. a princess. It's great. I'm awesome. My my brother is going to be heir to the throne. He's married my girlfriend, so I can stay in court and we can be together and it'll be great. And like, I'll get all the perks, but none of the awful responsibilities. And I'm my own person finally for the first time ever. And this is awesome. And what do you mean you want me to marry Cal, <laughs> Cal again. again? Because there is a group of silvers who want to put Cal back on the throne because they think Cal is the rightful ruler. And they think, okay, if we put Cal on the throne, everything is going to return back to the way it was because... Fisher King. Fisher King. So Samos is just like, yes, we will help you put Cal back on the throne. But if we put Cal back on the throne, you know, we want to have an alliance and the best way to get an alliance is through marriage. And Evangeline's like, God, no, why? Please don't. No. <laughs> like just. And so here's just thinking, I'm gonna have to go back and live in that palace and be married to Cal. And I just convinced the love of my life to marry my brother so we would be together forever. And nope. <laughs> Thanks for that. I feel so bad for her. Yeah, you do. And she's kind of like weirdly praying for Mare to save her because she's like, Cal is in love with Mare. If Cal realizes that, you know, he wants to just be with Mare, then he can stop this whole thing. He can shut this whole thing down. And, you know, Mare can shut this whole thing down. But power, oh my god, Cal. Power is corrupting, and we all know this. And so Cal is just like, think of what we could do together. You could be my side piece <laughs> to Mare. And Mare's just like... And he's uh, like, do I look like a side piece to you? <laughs> and he's like, you know what marriage is like to us silvers? It's not really about romance. It's it's about producing strong, you know, powerful children. And so like, Mare's just, Mare's like, just like, Mare goes back to like book one being like, I wanted you to choose me. And you're just like, <laughs> oh, oh God, God, not this again. <laughs> he doesn't. He's he doesn't. like, I want to be king. And she's like, well, I want, fuck you. On one hand, you know what? I'd be... I'd be cool with it. I'd be cool with Cal being like, no, I want to be king because I want to make a difference. And I can make a difference. And I have spent my time among 
the reds and like I was born a silver and I like I can make this good for everyone I can find a balance and everyone would be okay fine I, I don't think that's what's gonna happen though <laughs> and oh uh, you know what it would make sense in a way too because at least like for the silver side they're like oh look we've still got our king but you know he should also m but it would make sense if he married Mare because she's, you know, the powerful new blood red. Yeah, right? Even, so even then if... you've got this like interesting power dynamic where like, no, we're both ruling together. We are going to make shit better. Or even if they don't end up together. Like even if it's just like that bittersweet, we can't be together, but I do love you kind of thing. I'd be okay with both. So we kind of jumped around a bit, but what happens about three quarters of the way through the book is Mare ends up escaping Maven. You're like, okay, well, she's escaped Maven. She's going to go back to the rebel camp and where it's gonna be same old, same old, lots of whining, lots of bitching, lots of moaning, lots of fighting with people. But she gets back and she's like, I'm just so happy to not be with Maven. <laughs> I'm gonna be a decent person now. And so she meets up with some new blood, she meets up with some other like lightning new blood users who are kind of a little bit elitist. And I mean, she stopped bickering with Kalor and she's like, Cal, I love you. I'm glad that you're here. We, you know, I'm so glad we can finally be together and I'm gonna stop being such a whiny little mopey pants. I love my life right now and I mean it sucks because my brother's dead and I kind of had a hand in that if I wasn't such a whiny little bitch but life's good. I'm a little traumatized but I'm working through it and life is and you're like who are you? What happened? Like, how did you go through that and come out better than you went in? Like <laughs> just basically what happens in by the end of the book is the Reds had taken a city that was very like militarily important and so they're trying to hold the city because Maven and his like Lander Alliance are coming to try and take the city. They don't, they manage to push them back and this whole like alliance with Cal on the throne is that the last thing that happens. All right, so I think we said all that we wanted to say about Farley this. had her baby. Cameron finds her brother. I barely remembered who Cameron was. I had to go back and look it up yeah. because I was just like, hmm that again because Mare literally got to know no one she was like there's this person this person this person this person I hate them all because they exist and you're like um okay I don't care either I guess moving on I was bored that that's it that's, that's it it, was, it was, was awful it was hard to get through I was bored so what did you think of King's Cage tell us about it in the comments below did you like it did you not are we how did you manage to get yourself through it if you hated it are we awful people or do, do you agree with us anyways see you guys later